Hello, welcome to another episode of Interview With, with Roto. Uh, today we are joined by Nick Church of Nick Church Photography. Hi. Hello. <laughs> So, Nick, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you like to shoot. Well, I shoot mostly weddings, about 95% weddings. Um, generally, I shoot weddings um, around southwest the UK, so down to Cornwall. Um, lots in the South Wales as well, in South Wales, um, Gloucestershire, Wiltshire, and South Coast sometimes as well. So quite a bit, quite a wide area. Yeah, yeah, which is great. You know, I like to, you know, always different venue, different scenery and... Yeah, love yeah, it. Yeah, that's one thing I like about just the UK itself is lots of different venues. You've only really got to travel to a different village and it's entirely different. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Which is quite nice. So how long have you been shooting weddings for, particularly? Um, my first wedding was early 2016. Okay. I think January, February 2016. Um, it's been really hectic since then, so I've yeah. been doing loads <laughs> of weddings. At the time when I did that, that first wedding, I was um, had like a corporate career in the software industry, so I was... Okay. Managing that as well, um, so I was MD of a software company, um, and the two together was great in the early days because that you know the old weekend here or there, a bit of extra income. Um, as things started to grow, I had to get to a point where I thought, right, I need to decide what to do. And um, after that first wedding, I just loved it, and I knew that was, I thought I've got an aptitude for this. I'd not been into photography all my life or anything like that. I'd been using cameras about a year before yeah. then, um, and decided, right, I'm going to go for it. And once I put my mind to something, normally I, I do it. Just so go for it. That, that was that. I think I think that's a lot of what a lot of people have even messages I've had is how do you do it with a full time job, um, and it is hard, and it yeah. is something that you do need to decide on reasonably quickly, if you want to take it full time and do you drop the full time job? Yeah, I think you've got to appreciate. You've got to make sure that you're good. <laughs> first. I think you've got to be decent. I don't think you need to be. You don't need to be the best. I don't think. I think you know. You, you don't need. You just need to be. Good enough that you think you can market yourself to the right people you're going to get enough income yeah, to do it. Yeah. it is hard it's hard when you've got to want to create it's hard when you've got children so if you if um loads of photographers that have got um or amateur photographers looking to do it they've got child care responsibilities that's really hard um much harder say if, if you're looking after you know if, if your role at that time is looking after children that's even harder than a full-time job because yeah. full-time job stops at some point in the evening um yeah. but yeah you do have to be really careful with your time and you have to be really make sure that what you're working on at any time is the most important thing for your business and that's that's actually ironically something that i learned from my software career is how to sort of prioritize the things you're going to do i think well, i'd love to do that but that's actually not going to be as important as this thing it's really boring but that's going to take me <laughs> yeah, in the right direction that's, that's quite good it's quite good you've had you've had that opportunity to sort of your your day job has helped you really in the way you then set up your, your photography business which yeah. does help um can you give us a sort of description or just describe your style of photography yeah, I think um, I'm not a. Um, I've, I've not. I'm not one of these people that has read a load of books. I don't have a load of photographers that I aspire to be like, um, and that probably makes me sound really ignorant. It's not meant to. It's just no, that no, I've no. never had time to. I've never been into photography particularly before the. You know, it's, it's from the last sort of four years or so. Um, so I don't have these kind of idols that I sort of aspire mm -hmm. to be like. I think on the plus side of that, then I haven't chosen to follow anyone's particular style I've just developed my own style um, which is not to say that it's completely unique but it is a style that I think nowadays is identifiable as is my work um, that was actually going to be my next question was your style and did you actually do any sort of studying of photography and not necessarily looking at other other people that perform really well but yeah how did you sort of teach yourself it just completely self-taught okay. um, it's, it's the way my um, relatively simple mind works is that um, if I'm going to do so I need to understand it from the bottom up because I, I don't like these yeah, kind of um, if, if someone says well, just just do it like that and just accept that's how you do it I thought yeah I'll be not doing that then I yeah. need to understand yeah. why that is and so I did the same with photography worked out all right I've got a background in physics and things like that so I know how light works and things like that so I had a good head start with the software career as well then I've got a good head start on using software tools and things like yeah, that so that was yeah. right as well um, so it was just YouTube looking at um, how exposure works and how you get creative effects with photography and then just practicing at every possible opportunity and thinking right that's a great shot ah, that one's terrible right then trying to learn from everything I think I've always said this to, and it's something I always hope that I'll continue to do is I want to come away from a shoot thinking that was, I was really pleased with that 
those ones really sucked and I've got something that I know I'm going to do better next time and if I ever yeah. get to a point where I think I've not got anything to improve then I think that's probably going to pack up because that's when I know I'll stop getting better because you have to be really critical yeah I'm I'm totally the same self-taught and I'm I'm of the same vein if I'm not improving every year sometimes that a little bit of new gear comes along and that helps me want to improve as well because yeah. you do you do have those moments um, especially for myself and doing it a long time now and you do have those moments and you're like oh, I need to change something up yeah. um, and it's nice to make sure that you recognise that and keep improving Always well yeah exactly and I think that my my style that people will see in my portfolio it has got um, fair you know documentary edge to it so it, mm. it's I don't, I don't have any kind of posing that I set up. I don't do any posing, awkward poses or anything. Um, just that's not, and I, and I think there's some beautiful photos that are done like that, but that's just not what I'm into. I much rather want to get natural interactions, a bit of eye contact and, and those sorts of things that really kind of show the connection between two people yeah. rather than that. Um, but I do try and do things that, you know, once you've got the, the, the shots in the bag that you, you think, right, you know, that, I do like to do things a bit more unusual and think, well, I wonder if I could shoot through um, this sliver of a gap and see if I can get the bride. You know, things yeah. like that. And yeah. nine times of the time, they don't come off. But one time they do is when yeah. you've really got a winner and that's when you're really excited and you kind of get that passion again for trying yeah. to do something different every time. Yeah that's, yeah, that's always quite good. So how many weddings do you say that you shoot each year, this year and maybe next year? Have you got an idea? Yeah, well, this year I've got um, 50. Okay. Uh, so I've that's done great. two already. Um, so mostly those are my uh, me shooting. There's a few where um, my lead shooter's shooting as well, so that's been a really good, really good. good thing for the business to allow that option. Um, last year, I think I, had, I was about 40. Year before that was 25, 30 or so, and it was that 25 or 30 that was the kind of killer while I was doing like a nine to five job or nine to 11, as it turned out to be. You know, with yeah. a busy job. Um, so that that was yeah, that was a tough year, I think, for people that are gonna make a similar sort of trans transition into wedding photography or photography generally, or any business, probably there is going to be a year where, unless you can afford to take a complete break and just build yeah. things up, um, but most of us with mortgage and kids and things like that aren't going to have that luxury. So you have no. to do the two together until you can, you know, jump ship and go into the other one. Okay, so leading that leads me on really, what would you say are the key things that you wish you knew when you started out? Anything, a few little tips like giving too much away, the key things you wish you knew? Um, well, I think the, I suppose, I wish, I think that the, the, the things you know now are the things that aren't gonna work and the things that um, if you're trying to be, I, I think I, I was worried too much initially about um, a variety of images and I thought I don't know really because I hadn't had that kind of background of looking at the photographers and seeing how they what their work was like yeah. my style was all over the place and I think it took a while for that to sort of um, you know sort of channel into a single kind of style okay. of consistent photos um, and that makes it quite difficult for um, I think the reason we, we do that and look, most photographers do do that you know you might do some with a sepia you know, thing, and you think, oh, this yeah. is, that looks great, and then you realise that it probably didn't, and it probably really jarred against the other mm. photos that were in either just black or white or colour. But you're trying to do something that, that kind of rescues a shot that maybe isn't that great, yeah. <laughs> which is why we end up down selective colour or any of these other kind of, you know, yeah. vehicles that are trying to carry an image <laughs> along that probably doesn't deserve to be carried anywhere, you know? I think it's hard, too, if you're, if you're thinking, I suppose really starting out is trying to find your style, but that isn't something you can rush, so that's not... So no. that's, I suppose your key tip then, try and sort of find your style as early on as you can. I think, yeah, we find it as early as, we, early on as you can, but um, don't worry about trying to be like other photographers because if, you're, if your stuff looks different, then that's, you're on to the winner anyway. That is good. That's if it's different, yeah, that um, is good. And it doesn't, you know, as long as it doesn't look horribly different, it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. match. It's, it's, if it looks different, it's going to identify as your own work. And if it looks the same as everyone else, the classic thing in any business if it looks if it's the same as everyone else the only thing you can differentiate on is price and no one wants yeah. to bring their prices down if they can help it so if you want yeah. to have something that says well the reason we're going to go for that person Matt Turner's videos look different from um, these other five options that we're looking at sure. then price becomes a secondary thing because if they love that then, that, then you've, you've got half you've won half the battle yeah yeah that's fair enough um, so a lot of people ask all the time about gear 
what gear we use, what gear I use. Um, and in fact, I'll put a link in a minute because hopefully Nick wouldn't mind us showing what's in his photography bag. But just for the purposes of this video, do you mind telling us a little bit about what you use? And Sure, yeah. The Well, as you can see, I, I, I know like almost everybody else. <laughs> so he, he has I'm either got Sony, Sony or is considering that or has considered it. Um, I did come from a Nikon um, full frame system which had no problems whatsoever. So it wasn't, a, this didn't fix any issues I had personally, which made it a very expensive bit of gear acquisition syndrome, to be honest. But um, yeah, I do, I do love the small form factor with this lens on, it's quite big, yeah. but um, it's the, the technology in here, I think with this, um, the, the A7R III yeah. from the other models, that this was the first one that was up there with the likes of the Nikon D750 that I yeah. was using in terms of focusing speed, battery life, and actually made it yeah. a compelling alternative. I um, think that's the thing with, with the Sony's for me, and I've gone over to Sony, and for me, I definitely found the focusing system is what really sold sold the system to me. Yeah. It was just, I will hold my hands up and say, not every shot was in focus that I used to take, and a lot of my shots were out of focus and it used to hurt me so much when yeah. I had a shot that I knew was killer. Looks great on the back of the camera. Yeah. And you get it into Lightroom get, and you're like, yeah. oh, I, how, and, I, and you can't use it. It's not something you could even print. It wasn't good enough. Right. Um, and since I've gone over to that now, I don't believe I've ever missed focus. No, it's, it's any great. shot, every wedding. I think that, that, and that's really, you know, I think for weddings, especially or events where, where you are just looking to capture faces, that, but I think yeah. that is just, it, it's, a, it's a win of that. Um, I've always gone for a 35mm lens. Yeah. Um, I have two bodies at the same time. Um, and I always have a 7200 on the other on the other body. Yeah. Um, I've tried looking at um, prime different length primes. I've I've done that thing of you know there's a theory that if you get your 7200 lens, get it in Lightroom and you can you can see you know use the meta 18 you can see where your peaks of, of what focal length you're. Yeah. Do tend to, to favour. I looked at it, and there was a definite bump. You, the, the, the theory is you ignore the seventy end because that just means you couldn't get back any further. Yeah. You've basically, gone back. Yeah. Um, Two hundred, likewise, you couldn't be bothered to move, so you don't count that. So it's everything else. And there was a peak at well, about one thirty. So I thought, well, let me. I'll try and get one three five. Um, I did try one for a couple of weeks, and um, I've realised that what I do like about the seventy two hundred is the flexibility of it. So yeah, it isn't just is it isn't just the being lazy about where well, you could just move your feet. You know, yeah. you you can't then. You, there's some shots of the one three five you can't get because you're too close. Um, and likewise, if you suddenly see something that's a moment about to happen and it, it's going to be gone in a second, then yeah. if you've got that extra reach of two hundred mil, then you can then bang that as well. Um, so yeah, so I I, I got rid of the, the one three five um, and and just stick with a stick with that zoom. Although it is a huge lens to carry around all day, but yeah, fair um, enough. It's, it's worth it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's yeah. worth it. It's worth yeah. it. Um, so, just a little bit more, sort of, about yourself, really, and where do you find ideas for your photography? Is it something that just comes to you, or do you look or research anything in particular? I do look at. Um, I I do research the venue beforehand, so I I'll either go in person and have a look around. If it's impractical to do that, then I'll just do a lot of Google stalking it on on yeah, yeah, on yeah. Google Maps. And but you can quite often walking around somewhere, you can see that. Um, again, coupled with the fact that I don't tend to look too often at, at lots of other bits of work, so yeah. I don't tend to go to the same, you know, unless there's an obvious place at a venue where that's an obvious photo to be taken, like it's an yeah. arch or something like that, then, you know, the, the couple is likely to want the photo there. Yeah. And I don't want to do something that the couple don't want. However, on the flip side, I, I am always looking for um, a location at a venue that may not be the, the first choice for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so I've before now been down the back of the alleyway by some kitchens with a load of old stuff, you know, because as long as you've Something got loads original. of old wood, bits of corrugated iron, that could look absolutely beautiful, you know, especially with a bride and groom into, you know, looking awesome. So um, things like that are always things I'm trying to, trying to do something a bit different. And um, I think, and I think a lot of the couples I work with um, are increasingly just saying, we just want you to do what you do normally. And, yeah. you know, just, just sort of go with it and, and see, on the day, what the light's like, and pick, pick those kind of opportunities. That's so, and that's your your style has come to the fore. So the couple that now trust you, yeah. because because obviously Nick has found his own style, and you 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 yeah, they trust you. They yeah. know you're going to go off, and you're going to find something. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So inspiration wise, which is great, which is great because you you think well, that's a real compliment. They they say no, you we, yes. we love what you do, and um, 
we'll have you to do that. But then there's the pressure. You think, okay, so if I muck this up, then it's yeah, all on yeah, me. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, no, that's fair enough. Um, so with regards outside of weddings, is there anything else that sort of interests you or captivates you? Any other type of work that you do? Um, I, do I, I like to do writing. So I do um, writing, probably not enough on my website, um, which I should do more of, but I do like to write blogs. I do like to write for magazines, so I do a bit of that as well for yeah. um, professional photo magazine, um, shop kit, things like that. So um, yeah, that that's something, although it does take a bit, a large amount of time to do yeah. that. Um, it is something that I just find a real nice kind of um, yeah. relaxing thing to do that's completely different to worrying about business, inquiries, invoicing, and all those other, all the other which stuff. Is, that, which is, and yeah. everyone will tell you yeah. that is about 80% of our business. Yeah. Um, and if you're new to wedding photography, it only takes a year until you realise that. And unfortunately, you have to market yourself, sell yourself, and do yeah. all the admin. It's totally boring. That's um, right, yeah. Don't, um, don't be a photographer if you really love it if, if the, th the one thing you love about that is taking photos because that's the thing that you will end up doing less of it's true we do, we do love our <clears throat> the end result yeah but you have to you have to love business and the idea of business and the way to be successful i think otherwise you will it will always just be something that you do on the side exactly yeah i mean it, I, I always say that before i did this as a job then a beautiful sunset I'll be like, that's it. I'm out. I'm out getting, yeah. getting that sunset. And now, I think it's like, oh, forget it. I can't be bothered. <laughs> Just can't be bothered to do it. You do pull your um, energy into the wedding, into the paid jobs, and it's uh, yeah. I but, certainly do less. I think that's one thing that I try and tell everyone. Even if you are full time, and for you try and get out more for yourself. Yeah. Well, that's right. It's and, hard to do. And we often have this discussion in various groups and things about how do you keep that excitement alive. And I think that that is really it is good to have a project that you're yeah. working on. Um, so for that, one of the reasons that I bought that macro lens is I'm just going to go do some insects or do something completely different to what yeah. I've done before just to sort of think, oh, that's that's um, yeah. something I've not done before. Nick's just purchased a 90mm <clears throat> uh, macro, Sony macro, and we'll have a look at that in a minute on the next video. You'll see it. But, uh, but yeah, yeah the, the, but that's exactly it. About, um, it's, the, the job is full of all sorts of other things, but y y you take all that aside, you're still being rewarded yeah. for creativity and taking photographs and waking up to do the job that you love to do and yeah there's some more cruddy bits of it but then yeah. which job hasn't got that right so <laughs> there's th no way I would ever go back and work for anyone else no. been there done that yeah never work for anyone else as much as I sometimes think oh I get my head down as you've probably already seen I was just in Malta shooting a wedding I've got one in Tuscany in September no other job would have had that opportunity all expenses paid and I do I do still love it but the, the whole reason I set up this YouTube channel is to talk to other professionals and just to have fun and to share my videos with you guys um, so yeah try and find something that keeps the passion there once you're full-time if you're a full-time photographer now do have a little think about that and see if you can do something else well, just to go and uh, just for I five think, minutes I think otherwise it it's easy for all of us professional on the professional game to be to be able to go and just think well that way I'm gonna do the same as before you can always shoot a wedding, probably, it, you know, you could use half the amount of creativity, half the effort, and still do something as good as the last time because you're not doing anything new. And that couple, the, the beauty of doing that is that couple weren't at your last wedding. They haven't seen the last wedding photo, so that they're perfectly happy with yes. it as well. And you can therefore get into a habit of doing that. And if and actually some people, that is their business model. So if you've got a big associate model, yeah, where you've got lots of shooters working for you, then that that is what you do. You prescribe what you're going to do. Yeah. Um, I want to do something different to that because I want every wedding to be completely unique. But that's not to say that that isn't a valid way to do things. And but for me, if I real, if I find myself thinking, oh, I'm just looking for that one shot that I did last time because that was really lovely, and I think, well, I'll, I'll take it. But I also want to do something that's then in yes. a different direction as well. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so the other thing I wanted to quickly ask if there's any other sort of projects and things you've got going on, and I, I actually this wasn't briefed. I only saw this the other day about the sort of training program mm -hmm. that you currently do and this isn't unnecessarily a plug it's just something that I wanted to ask you about because I didn't know much about it at all so well it is an excellent program of course now, it now is. that you brought it up <laughs> of course it is <laughs> and uh, but yeah that that is I, I guess one thing is that that is in the area of something that I, I love to do that I love to help people out and yeah so if, if you're doing something that's not editing all the time and it's something different that's that's really nice to do when I when I started out I um, emailed I didn't email you so don't worry about this. I emailed dozens of photographers <laughs> to say, can I come and just watch over your shoulder when you're doing a wedding, can we meet for coffee, talk about how you, how you 
how do you be a wedding photographer, right? Like, yeah. Because I had no idea. Um, and there was a couple of people, James Fear got back to me, um, and so did Albert Palmer, pretty much everyone else didn't. And so okay. those guys, fair play to you both. Because and those two I actually respect. I didn't, I didn't know this story at all. And yeah, I do actually respect those two guys and they're mixed in on the forums a lot and they're always helpful. Um, also very talented. But, yeah, and, yeah. and I, I thought, right, if I make progression in this business, then I, I was determined that one thing I would do would be try and you know, help people out um, with advice. So I do have a pretty open door in terms of people asking for advice. If, if I've been on a podcast, I'm always happy to have questions afterwards and yeah. you know, help people out. That's, You're now going to get inundated <clears> with messages. That's fine. That's fine. No, I do. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'll, I'll put the details <laughs> in the bottom. Fine. That's fine. Within with, within reasonable within limits. Reason, yeah, yeah. Re- reasonable cap applies. Fair enough. Um, but and, and actually, that's that's how the training thing started. Is that I've done a few things on Facebook advertising. I, I have had great success with Facebook okay. as an advertising platform, um, and it it was responsible for probably a first. 100 bookings easily yeah through facebook um and i, I say to this day if, if you want to get from a new business new wedding photography business or other photography genres yeah. um there's no better platform to get you from no bookings to a level of bookings where you could consider leaving your job than facebook yeah. that, that i can gather that, that, I, that i've heard of even because wedding fairs takes a couple of as you know you, you've got to yeah, it yeah. takes you a year yeah. before you even get one all I had was wedding fairs when I yeah. started and it, it's, hard. it's hard if you want bookings to come in this week then then there's no better way to do it mm. um, so I've, I've, I've mentioned that on loads of different forums I've written magazines about it people have been asking how, how, how they set their ads up and that kind of thing and that kind of led me to think that is a real market for um, just having a workshop where I can we can spend a decent amount of time on it because the problem with answering stuff on messenger mm. is that the devil's in the detail it's all well and good me giving a few tips on what i've done but then when you get bring up advert manager on facebook and it's like a flight deck of concord with mm. number you know and if you get it wrong you, any of those options are wrong it just bombs the advert doesn't work at all right yeah. so um so that that and that's why i created that course so i created a facebook ads course which is not expensive it's i figured I've, i can't spend four hours for everybody free of charge right. as much right. as I'd like to. Um, it's at the level of investment that that first campaign, I guarantee you'll make that back and more, you know, the first booking you get, right? So, yeah, that's um, the thing the business are in. One booking can help pay for it. And I think yeah. if you make that distinction for your first year, to the money you get in to reinvest into things like this. That's right. It's it, worth it, your equipment and your training. Exactly. And it's all, you can tax deduct anything like that as well. Sure. So there, there's that. And yeah, the, the other courses that I do around Flash or workflow for wedding photographers and things is just a really nice site, you know, things to do on the, that it's alongside the photography. And it's really nice to be able to, you know, help people that are in a similar position that I was, yeah. you know, not, not too long ago with really recent things of things that I've and it's not because I'm a guru with photography it's because I've tried most of these things and they didn't work and I spent a you fortune so Again, I've advertised, yeah, you've got I've advertised in every possible way and spent a fortune on it the only thing yeah. that's really worked is, is Facebook and that's how I've kind of narrowed down to this method of making that work mm-hmm. but the yeah the it was actually your um, studio that we're in now um, was the inspiration for me to get a facility yeah. that's not of this size but a facility that I can have people in and actually do sure. courses where I can um, have more than one person. It's a nice environment, sort of do a bit of training and things as yeah. well as as well as some shooting and things as well. So that's a ongoing project as well. That sounds good. That sounds really good. We'll see more of that in the future, hopefully. Yep. Um, well, I really just want to finish off asking you about sort of wedding photography in particular again, um, but sort of where you see it going for yourself in the next few years, and maybe where you see the industry going. Have you got any insights into that or? Yeah, I mean the. It's a, that's a really good question. It, it's three years. I'm three years into this business. Yeah. Um, every year has been. Com- it's a complete eclipse of the year before, so it's yeah. it's makes it really hard to imagine where in twelve months' time where the business will be yeah. um, and what's going on. I know that this year I've got um, Garrett on board, so the lead shooter, the subcontract lead shooter that that is um, doing great stuff with the weddings that I can't do as well. So that's an option there is to expand that model. Yeah. I'm reluctant in some ways to go to a full-on associate model of 10 different people yeah. because I would worry then that I can't keep the quality to be where I want it to be or the style where I want it to be. And I think the only way I would be able to do that would be if I backed away from shooting completely and I'd end up running a company again. 
yeah, and I've kind of, done, I've kind of do. done that. And and that's, that's, that's why I started in this. and say the same. That and that happened with me, and I did grow quite quickly um, and got to nearly a hundred weddings in one year. And I did wow. have four guys out regularly shooting. I'd always take the lead job, and then obviously if there were other jobs that I couldn't do, or whatever, rather than turn them away, I'd say, look, we've got an associate, and I've trained them fully. Um, now I never had. And I think I was lucky. I never had any issues at all, but I saw some warning signs, and I was like, "You've mm. got to be careful with with who represents you in your business." So yeah. there's a there's you've got to be careful not going too growing too fast. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it, and and there are stories of where businesses have tried that model, and it is really hard to do. The margins yeah. become thinner and thinner, um, even with the economies of scale that you've got from things like admin and all those other mm. things. It is very difficult. And if you're if if stuff goes wrong and two weddings that you, you, that you had for example and you were shooting a wedding as well your ability to sort that out is limited yeah so you then, busy. You, then you think about right do you need to get a business manager someone that's actually yeah. managing the business and that's a that's an option right you know could go down that route have someone to manage that side of it that would allow me to keep shooting as well so that that's an option um my work is still um i'm really pleased where it's at now so I, yeah. you know if, look you know I, I really like the start it's really engaging with my clients and it's you know, people are uh, coming to me because they see my work, they identified something in there that connects with them and I, I love that. And, I, and so that's something that um, I'll continue to develop with, with my clients and work, try and keep current with what people are looking for. Yeah, um, yeah so that, that's it. So it's really exciting. Who knows where I'll be in 12 months. I know that, <laughs> you know, what wedding photography is like. You've, you've got a good heads up on what your book is like. So I know it's been busy next year because I've got... Yeah, that's the one 30, good thing about bookings. this job. As self-employed, you know yeah. what next year's like. That's and right. next year's nearly fully booked. And it's you're looking at 2021 already, which I still yeah. can't get my head around. It's, we're, right. we're that far along and we're just getting old. But other than that, um, no, it's quite exciting. Old? That's, yeah, that's I, a shame, isn't it? Yeah, I think, I'm, I'm uh, right, I think we're both getting old. All right. <laughs> we're all getting old. Um, but no, it's, it's something I think this job does keep you young. I think as soon as I stop doing this, I'm just going to collapse. But I love it. I still love it. I do love it. Collapse in front of all Antiques Roadshow. Yeah, yeah. that'll be that. I do watch the Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> See you years old. <laughs> um, but no, that's brilliant. Thank you ever so much, Nick, for your Pleasure. time. Um, keep an eye out for the next video coming. We're just going to have a, a deep dive into Nick's kit bag. Uh, and just have a look. And if you're really keen about the style that Nick shoots and want to know a bit more about exactly what gear he uses, we'll have a little nose now. Cool. Um, yes, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this and want to see any of the other videos we've got coming up. And I will catch you in the next one.